One of the best ways you can grow your audience is simply by doing interviews. It allows you to share your audience and somebody else to share their audience with each other and therefore growing an audience, which is awesome. But doing in-person interviews is a little bit more difficult because of the times we're in and also just the logistics of having to make it happen. So in this video, I'm gonna share three ways that you can do remote interviews. So if you're doing podcasting, you can do interviews and capture the content. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Takori with Think Media, and this video is sponsored by StreamYard. StreamYard is the way we do live streams here on Think Media, but I'll talk about StreamYard a little bit later in this video as I break down the three ways that you can conduct a remote interview. Now, the first way is the easiest way, and that is by using a video conferencing software like Zoom, Google Hangout, and things like that. This is awesome because not only is it free, it's easy for the person you are interviewing to simply download it, and then you get them on by sending a link, and then you just record that conversation. Specifically with Zoom, you can simply just record a conversation, and then it'll give you a video file at the end of that conversation, which is really easy. And then with Google Hangout, you can actually cast that conversation into YouTube, and then you can find that conversation in your creator studio in YouTube. So that makes it really easy However, with its easiness and freeness, it kind of drops in quality. This is probably not the best quality way to go about it, although it's easy and you just realize that content is king. So if, if it's a fire conversation, it's a fire conversation. But what's better than just a fire conversation is one that is uh, sounds really good and looks really good, and we'll get to that. And so that is just one way to do it. Probably the most popular way I see people are doing it. Many times applications like Zoom or Google Hangout will crush the bit rate of your audio. So that's just one thing to know. You're just not gonna get the best quality audio and video out of this way of doing it. The second way you can conduct a remote style interview is by using a live stream platform. Some platforms you might have heard in the past are things like like Ecamm Live, OBS, Discord, and our favorite, StreamYard. This way of conducting an interview is awesome because not only can you live stream the interview if you want to, but you can actually brand it to your liking. And I think this is the easiest way to add branding. When it comes to Zoom or Google Hangouts, it kind of just gives you the interface as is. What's cool about these uh, ways of doing it is that you can actually create your own backdrop or kind of font and bring in titles and text and things like that. Essentially conducting a live interview show, which is really cool, but I think uh, that's kind of the biggest pro when it comes to using something like this. Now, one con you may consider a con is that a lot of these platforms require a membership of sorts, whether that's monthly, yearly, or if you wanna just get a more premium uh, you know, experience when it comes to using these platforms, there's usually gonna come a cost a cured with that. But I think there's something powerful about being able to have a branded show. I think there's something powerful about it being uh, nice and actually visually appealing as you're conducting an interview or even when a, when a guest gets brought on, which leads me to talk about the sponsor StreamYard. We like using StreamYard to conduct our show called Coffee with Candle when Sean goes live and he brings on people live and conducts interviews and things like that. It's also cool to do teachings from. When I do uh, live streams on Think Media, I'm usually using a slide deck. And so being able to transition really cool, as well as being able to upload videos and share videos in your live stream um, is really cool. And so you can really do a live show with something like StreamYard. And if you wanna get more information about StreamYard and a discount link, make sure you check out the link in the description below. We actually have a great video training on StreamYard that's on our channel and we'll post links to it at the end of this video. You can check it out. But if that's something you wanna go with in regards to conducting your remote interviews, it's a great option and it's what we do here at Think Media. Now I'm gonna share my favorite way to conduct a remote podcast and I think it's the best way if you can do it. However, I wanna know from you down in the comments below, what interview shows uh, or podcasts do you like listening to or watching? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're getting value in this video, hit that like button for me. And the third way to conduct a remote style podcast is to actually just film it. Now, what I mean by that is that you actually film the conversation using a camera. It's kind of like an off-centered camera while you're conducting the interview, whether it is on Zoom or another video conferencing platform, but you are actually getting the shot filmed of the conversation itself. And as you can see from this example that I did with Nolan, I actually had a camera filming me and he had a camera filming himself. And then later in post, is how we put that all together. One reason why this is my favorite way of conducting a remote style interview more than anything is because of the viewing experience. You're giving the viewer multiple angles, which creates a, a better dynamic and keeps you more engaged as you change 
angles. If you're just gonna upload a 40 minute Zoom conversation, it's kind of be gonna be harder to wanna watch. Maybe you'll just wanna listen to something like that. However, if you got two camera angles, as well as the recording from your computer, and maybe you, if you wanted to add another camera, so you having you have a minimum of three angles for this podcast, which is awesome. And typically what I even do when I'm even on location filming a podcast. And so uh, this is a great way. Now, huge con for sure is the logistical uh, way of getting this done. You actually need decent cameras to capture it. You need somebody who knows the settings and you, you want to match it. And so it was a lot easier to do it with Nolan because we communicate and we're in each other's world and things like that. Also the logistical aspect of getting it edited. There's now editing involved where the other two ways I mentioned conducting an interview don't really require much editing because it's captured as you do it, right? And so this is just a cool way of doing it. The, the content I've seen when it's done lends me to wanna actually watch the interview. And obviously in the times we live in, this has kind of happened more and more, is conducting interviews like this. And I do think it's achievable. I mean, even if you're using a smartphone, like, hey, can you just set your smartphone off to the side and then send the files later uh, is one way to do it. Another pro to doing your interview like this can be capturing the audio separately as well. Now you don't have to take the audio from the Zoom call, but you can add audio from the the camera because you plugged in the mic or you had your zoom recorder or maybe your laptop recording the audio nonetheless you're you're now getting good quality audio files to go with your good quality video and so it just really all in all enhances the experience to the viewer however you can enhance the quality of your video when doing zoom calls or doing things like StreamYard, and that's by using a camera as your webcam. And we have a video on how you can do that, and you can learn how to level up the quality of your video conferencing or your live streams, and you can check that out by clicking or tapping in the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.